Hello, today is April 21st, and I'm pleased to welcome back Dr. Atul Gupta, who is the Medical Director of Infection Prevention here at Silver Cross. Is it okay to take off our masks for yeah, the video? Yeah, sure, we can. All right. Um, Dr. Gupta has been by our side from the very beginning, working round the clock. You know, in fact, it was exactly five weeks ago today that we did our first video. Mm. I mean, who who would have thought five <laughs> weeks later we'd still be at this yeah. whole steam? Yeah, we've come a long way since then. We have come a long way since then, but I can't thank you enough times and over and over again for the guidance and the leadership that you've provided here. You've made us all feel somewhat calm through, through this crisis. Um, so I hope that the evidence is showing maybe some hopefulness. So yeah, what are um, your thoughts on that? So certainly um, nationwide, um, over the last seven to 10 days, the number of new cases has leveled off. Same thing statewide. Um, and then especially here at Silver Cross, actually, our overall COVID census, um, both um, uh, total census and just the patients we know to be positive, has leveled off and even starting to decline a little bit. Yeah, that, that's a relief. Yeah, it is a relief. absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, but let me ask you a question. There's still a lot of confusion about testing. Mm -hmm. So can you clarify who should be tested and what's available for the community? Our uh, testing capacity has been very slowly growing, but it has been growing. Our recommendations for testing are staying pretty much the same right now because our capacity is not uh, so great that we uh, test everybody right now or that we even need to. We're still focusing on symptomatic patients and patients who are high risk, uh, both of high risk of having been exposed to the infection and having complications from the infection. Okay. And of course, we're testing patients who are being admitted who are symptomatic. Right. So like for yourself and your partners who are um, ex you know, around COVID patients every day, are you going to get tested or? Uh, we're only being tested if, again, if, if, if you're symptomatic. If we're symptomatic, yeah. Okay. Otherwise, you know, because we're taking precautions every day when we see the patients, we're not really considering ourselves to be exposed sure. on a regular basis. Okay. At the beginning of all this, and when you and I talked, we weren't wearing masks at the mm -hmm. beginning. And as a matter of fact, I think we discussed that it wasn't necessary. And then we changed here to universal masking. What changed our stance on that? You know, our, our, our masking and really all of our isolation policies have been based on the idea that, you know, everyone at the hospital is an essential healthcare worker, whether you're in food service or EBS right. or your frontline staff taking care of patients, everyone's essential. So we've been focusing on protecting our staff um, so that they can keep doing what they're doing, so that we can keep taking care of patients. At the beginning, we didn't have widespread community spread. Um, and so there really wasn't an indication to mask everybody because it just wasn't very likely that we were spreading it amongst ourselves. Um, at a certain point, the case numbers started to go up and we had enough cases in the community that we thought it would make more sense um, and protect the staff, again, um, to have everybody wear a mask. These uh, surgical masks and the cloth masks, they really are a great barrier from spreading, if you're an asymptomatic or a symptomatic carrier, um, spreading the infection to other employees, patients, family, anybody. Right. So probably masking is um, partially responsible for the leveling off and the decline we're starting to see. Absolutely. Yeah. Masking. Um, and then, of course, the shelter at home order has had the biggest impact. Um, anything we can do to prevent exposing ourselves to other people and exposing them to us will make a big difference and we've seen the results good um so when we're out in the community like we have to go to the grocery or mm -hmm. get gas should we be wearing a mask all the time absolutely yeah okay. absolutely it's a big part again of that prevention in the community keep the trends leveled off so that the hospitals don't become overwhelmed good 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 advice speaking of overwhelmed there are some people that are talking about another surge what are your thoughts on that I think right now um, we're, like I said, leveling off, so we're okay for now. And um, the uh, public health officials are really taking a very close look at uh, keeping the shelter in place order versus slowly lifting it to prevent another surge. I think right now we're we're just seeing the results of, of the policies that have, put, that have been put in place. And if we were to lift everything today, we would certainly see a surge. And so I think that, that uh, at least in the state of Illinois, from what I've seen, they're doing a really good job, a very careful job, and being very careful to see that that doesn't happen. I know. We have Mother's Day coming. 
So unfortunately, people need to stay home, but we can we can all FaceTime each other. We've learned how to use Zoom. I have a Zoom account now too. That's right. (laughs) I've read a lot in the press about antibody antibody testing. Can you explain what that is and how that can help? So what antibody testing is, is uh, looking for the presence of antibodies, and antibodies fight off infection. So they're looking for the presence of an antibody that'll fight off the coronavirus. Um, the uh, thinking is that if you have those antibodies, that it both indicates that you've been exposed to the virus and you've recovered from it, you might not have even had any symptoms, and then um, possibly that those antibodies mean that you could be protected from the virus. So those antibodies will prevent you from getting the virus. That part of it we don't know for sure yet. We have experience with other coronaviruses that have been out there in the past, like SARS and MERS, um, that those people uh, were felt to be immune for at least two to three years based on their antibody levels. The new virus we don't know yet because it's just so new. Um, And so there's still a lot of research being done on that. So we don't have antibody testing here yet. We probably soon will have the ability to do some antibody testing but the real question is how to use it and what it means. We don't want people to think, oh, I have antibodies, I'm immune, I can do whatever exactly. I want, because we just don't know that yet. Okay, thanks for clarifying that. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, in our community, um, our nursing homes have really been struggling. Some assisted living facilities. How are we at Silver Cross working with those facilities? Yeah, what's happening at the nursing homes is just a tragedy at some yeah. of these nursing homes. We at Silver Cross, um, my group, Personally, we uh, are on staff at several nursing homes in the area. The hospitalist group here also goes to several nursing homes. The hospital itself has been collaborating with the nursing homes, providing not just guidance, but also our physical uh, PPE. We, we um, Meg, uh, who's in charge of our supply chain, is, is, is a miracle worker in, 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 is. in uh, obtaining some of these things. And so we, we've had the ability to actually provide them with masks to protect their workers and their patients. Yeah. Well, thank you for helping out the nursing homes and we'll do whatever we can to keep those people safe as well. Um, We have had employee exposures here at Silver Cross. Can you comment on their status? Sure. Um, We, of course, um, have been taking all the efforts we can to prevent the employees from being exposed, um, but it has happened. We've had, um, I think, just over 700 employees that we've considered to be exposed. um, And right now we only have four employees on furlough um, for that. And, um, uh, we, we've seen a decrease in the exposures over right. the last few days, right. for sure. And those that are furloughed don't necessarily have COVID-19, but they're symptomatic. That's so. right. Yeah, we've had very few employees um, who have actually turned out to have COVID-19 infection. Um, uh, and the ones that are furloughed right now uh, don't necessarily. That's right. Yeah, that's really good news because yeah. we need everybody. We can't all hands on deck here. Well, again, do you have any concluding comments before we wrap up today? Um, I do on a personal note. Um, uh, you know, I spend a lot of my day now um, looking at data and yeah. studies and um, guidelines and coming to meetings and trying to help shape the policies here. I spend the other half of my day on the floors mm-hmm. um, with the clinicians, with everyone who's the front line really taking care of these patients. And, you know, um, uh, what I see on the floors, especially on the units where we're keeping and treating most of our COVID patients, you know, the, the thing I hear most commonly when I'm up there amongst the staff is, how can I help you? What can I do for you? How can I support you with you caring for these patients? I mean, I've, I've seen doctors gearing up, putting their PPE and uh, stop the nurse and say, you know, I'm going in your patient's room. Anything I can do for you when I'm in there, it's just great. So it, just, it makes me so proud to be associated with the staff here when I see that every day. Well, thank you for saying that. And I cannot say enough how proud we are to be associated with you. Thank you.